you have a repository set up locally and at beanstalkapp.com. We've got our first commit, so now we've got our code into version control. Let's now start talking about deployments. Now remember, again, a deployment is basically taking that code and deploying it or pushing it to a location of some kind. And what that's usually typically used for is you'll have a production server, maybe a staging server and development servers that are beyond your local machine that you want to make sure that your version control commits are being pushed to so others can take a look at what you're doing and finally getting that into your production environment. So at Beanstalk, when we're logged in and we're looking at our particular repository, we have a deployments tab that we can go to. And here we can create an environment and assign a server to that environment. So for this instance, let's go ahead and just call this environment production. You can color code things. Now you can choose a manual deployment or an automatic deployment. A manual deployment either works in two ways. One, you have to log in to beanstalkapp.com and manually do the deployment process with a few clicks. Or in your commit message, if you do deploy with this message here, if you deploy to the actual environment, that's how you can do this here. The automatic method just detects when you commit new changes to your environment and then automatically pushes that out. We can also choose the branch. What's nice about this is if we have multiple branches, we can assign different environments to different branches. So in my example, I have a dev branch and a master branch. So I will show you with my setup how we can use those two different branches with different environments. Let's go ahead and add our environment. Now you can choose the server type, which is great because you've got a lot of options from FTP to Amazon. All these are great. We're going to skip this step because we don't really have any settings to show right now, but this is all you do. And you, if you, hopefully you know how to set all these up. If not, go ahead and figure that out. Perfect. So now we have a deployment environment. And what happens now is you click the deployments tab and you'll see that environment and you can set up your servers. And if you have a higher Beanstalk account, you can actually have multiple servers assigned to an environment. So if you have multiple production servers, you can actually have the code pushed to all of those. It's pretty cool, pretty powerful. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go to the environment that I have a lot of the setup. I've got multiple commits and things going on. And in that environment, I've got a production as well. We can now add a second environment, which I could call development. And I could choose to keep it at manual, but now I could choose my dev branch. So now I could actually deploy my local stuff, have it pushed to a development server, have people go ahead and take a look at it and say things are good to go, and then I could deploy it to my production server. So that's kind of how this works. We just skip this step. Look at our deployments. So now we have a development and a production environment. So that's pretty much all you've got to do on Beanstalk. Again, we haven't even opened up a terminal or anything at all. And now we've got places for our code to deploy to and to deploy that we can do it manually by putting something in the commit message, logging into the website, and I'll show that how that works. Or you can just have it do it automatically. So let's go ahead and take a look at our local site that we have running that we're going to make a few changes inside of a feature. We're going to commit those changes to our repository look at Beanstalk app to see that the commits there and we'll manually deploy that code. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now again, this is just a series on deployment and using beanstalkapp.com. But since we did a little bit of Git tutorial, let's kind of discuss what we're doing and why we're doing it. Well, what we're doing is when you have your site in a live environment and then you have your site in a local environment, the live environment is usually you don't switch the databases back and forth because then you can cause issues with things being out of sync or when you have to put your database into your live, you usually I take your site down. So what this does, this is basically separates the database layer from all your settings layer and all your configurations that you do inside Drupal. And there's a module called features that makes this possible. It's uh, something that they're working on inside Drupal 8 to make it more of part of Drupal versus just using the features module. But again, the main reason you do this is so when you make all these settings, you can deploy that code and that code can be deployed to your live site and then changes can happen instantly. It's also so if something goes wrong, you're able to roll that back and you can do all of this without messing around with your database. So what we've done here is I've just kind of created a site and in my site, I've got features running and inside features, I've created a few features. One of those features is a blog. It's basically the one feature I've got running on this site. And what this does is it contains all of the elements that make up my blog. So in that, it's basically now if I wanted to add content and I wanted to add a blog, all of these settings that are controlling all of this are now stored in code. So if I make a change to my blog, such as add a field, we can then add that field to the feature, which will then put that field in code. 
Then what we'll do is we'll commit those changes of code into our repository, and then we will push those to the Beanstalk app repository, and from there we can choose to have that put into production. So then what will basically happen is, locally I will have added a field to my blog, and then I will make sure that field now appears in production. All of this without using terminal, all of this without having to basically do anything but click a few buttons. And what this then does means, so now I didn't have to mess with my database and I've got things in code. If I decide I don't want that field, I could roll back that code or remove it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to structure, content types. Let's manage these fields. Let's just call this terms. And let's just do a term reference. Let's go ahead and just save this field. We'll grab it from this vocabulary, just kind of set up a blank slate here. Let's go ahead and click Save This Setting. Let's um, put this above the body. We'll go ahead and save that. Now we've got all this, and what it's doing right now is all this is currently saving to the database of how it's happening. So now let's, if we go to Structure, Features, and Recreate, you can see now that it's saying overridden, because basically what's in the database doesn't match what's in code. So now it's using the database state versus the code state. So let's go ahead and recreate this. And what we need to do is we need to go ahead and add a few things. So one big thing I know we need to do is inside the fields, we need to go ahead and add that new field that we just created, which actually detected it and already added it for us. Features keeps adding new things to it, and that's one of the new things, and it's pretty great. So it's also knows the taxonomy is there. So all we have to do is download this feature, install it into our site just like we do a module, and then we'll go ahead and upload that code. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add the feature and then we're gonna go take a look at committing that. So now that I've added the feature and re-uploaded that into my local site, you can now see that in my repository inside Tower, it's noticing the changes to that feature. I also added a few modules, the C-Tools module and the strong arm, just so you can see how it's detecting those things as being new as well. I'm also gonna demonstrate how we can choose just what we wanna stage just like that. So now I can stage only my feature changes and commit those and still not commit these modules for now. So let's go ahead and do that. Right now, if you notice, I'm on my master branch doing all of this. It's usually a good practice. I'd probably do this on my dev branch or even create a new branch for this particular thing, maybe call it blog. For now, I'm just going to show you the master because we're deploying to master. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just call this updated blog as a commit message. Now remember, in Beanstalk, if I added to my commit message that special line of code, that would actually deploy it automatically for me. But I'm gonna show you how we do it inside beanstalkapp.com. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make this commit. Update the blog. Now remember, this is only really committing locally still. Now it's showing me that I've got one change that's out of sync from the uh, remote repository. So I'm gonna push those changes up. Perfect, now we can see those changes are made. Here's our commit, updated blog. So now this is in our master branch in our remote repository. But again, this still isn't in our production live environment. Let's go ahead and take a look at our local environment again. So if we add content, now locally when we add content and we choose to add a blog, you can see that we can choose the new field terms. But if we go to our production live environment and add content and add a blog, Terms is still not an option. So let's go back to Beanstalk. Let's go to Deployments. Let's click on our production environment and let's say manually deploy. Now it's actually seeing the latest revision and that's what we're deploying. We can give this deployment a note if we want and then we can say review deployment and start the deployment. Now it'll actually show you that it, it's deploying. It's showing us that the environment is one revision behind and now everything is all set. It's still finalizing the deployment. There was one commit and it telling you the amount of files. So we refresh this page, that message goes away. Now we know production has the exact same code that we do technically locally in that master branch. So let's go back to our production environment and let's refresh this page. And with the page refreshed, we now have our terms field in our production live environment. We did all of this without opening up a terminal or without having to have some high-end knowledge of servers. We did it all with beanstalkapp.com and using version control. So we have basically learned how to get our stuff into version control and how to use a web app such as Beanstalk 
and use that to deploy our code to a server environment.